Howdy, everybody. Here we are, all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Suppose you were buying a certain food product for your family, and you had a choice of two kinds. Cost a little less than the other, but contained inferior ingredients. Which kind would you buy? The one that cost a little more, of course. It's equally certain that you'd always buy Horlicks if you only knew how superior Horlicks is. If you only knew that whereas the imitations and substitutes offered contain skim milk, inferior malt powder, and raw cocoa, Horlicks uses only rich, full cream milk, carefully selected wheat and malted barley, prepared under the supervision of experts. Next time you're buying malted milk, remember this and insist on Horlicks, the original. Your druggist has it, you know, in both natural and chocolate flavors. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, you know Squires Kemp is suing Lum and Abner and the Pine Ridge Planetarium for $1,000 personal damages for injuries he was supposed to have received when he fell in their theater a short time ago. The case is being tried in at the county seat today, and as we look in on the courtroom now, the case is well underway. Lum hasn't yet arrived, and the testimony so far has been very much against our old friend. We find Abner and Dick Huddleston and Grandpappy Spears seated together near the witness stand. Listen. Yeah, what they doing now, Dick? What's the matter? Why, they're looking up some form of law there, I think, Abner, some technicality. They've done nothing but argue ever since the case started. No, they ain't. Well, I hope they have a hard time finding to give Lum a chance to get you. Yeah, well, where about did Lum say he's going at anyway? Why, he stopped by that insurance office to buy some liabilities insurance on our picture show. Said he never wanted to go through another lawsuit like this without his protecting. And he must be buying them out, taking them this long. I'll be over before he gets here if he don't hurry up. Well, yeah, your lawyer was asking for him a while ago. Wanted to call him up there on a witness stand. Bet he don't even show up. Knows he ain't got a chance to win the case no way. No, no, he said he'd be right on over here. Something must be a-keeping him. Yeah, he may as well stay away for all the good he'll do him. That testimony of Snake Hogan's and Doc Miller is going to be hard to ever get around. Yeah, Doc Miller. Supposed to be a friend of getting up there on a the witness stand a while ago and saying that he couldn't tell where his squire was hurt or not. He knows good and well that he weren't hurt. Well, of course he weren't. Well, uh, he just said that the uh, squire claimed he's hurt in the back, Abner, and that it was impossible for a doctor to tell about an injury in the back that a way. A yeah. bunch of Germans up there all nodded their heads when he said that, too. Yeah, right? I've seen them. I believe they've already got their minds made up to give squire the $1,000 damages. Yeah. Look at them sitting up there. That's the meanest-looking bunch of fellers I ever seen, all in one bunch. Yeah, but when the when the judge asked if anybody wanted to challenge the jury while ago, Cedric jumped up and wanted to fight the little feller on the end. Yeah. Did you hear him? Yeah, looks like they're mad because they have to be up there from the looks on their thing. Yeah, I'd hate to have him trying me for something, passing judgment on me. They'd about send a feller to the electric chair over nothing. Why, well, sure they would be tickled to death to do it. And look at the squire over there. Dad's blame his ornery side. I hate that old man to pieces. Look at him sitting there smiling. Yeah, he knows he's going to win, that's sure. all. More like they're sitting there trying to figure out some way to spend the money right now. Yeah, old squire's pretty confident, all right. You can tell that. I believe they got that settled now over there, ain't Yeah, they? yeah, I believe they have it turned around. Order in the court, please. All the next witness. Well, we'd like to call the plaintiff, uh, M.K. Skimp, Your Honor. Call Mr. Skimp to the witness stand, please. M.K. Skimp? M.K. Skimp? Yes, yes, coming, coming. Yeah, look at him, strutting up there like an old turkey gobbler. So I wonder he don't fall over backwards. Yeah, I wish he would. Raise your right hand, be sworn, Mr. Skimp. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Uh, Mr. Skimp. Will you be good enough to tell the jury, in your own words, the details of the accident you experienced in the Pine Ridge Planetarium? Why, yes, I'll be glad to. I walked up to the box office that night and bought a ticket, just like any other customer would, and I walked down the aisle to find a seat. It was so dark, I couldn't see where I was going, and the first thing I knew, I stumbled over something and fell. 
I evidently hit the back of my head against one of the seats, sir. Because when I gained consciousness, I was over at my home in bed, and the doctor was there. Since that time, I've suffered untold pain and agony in the back of my head and spine. And you're now only asking for $1,000 for those injuries? Yes, yes, uh, defendants in this case are old friends of mine, and I hate to ask for anything at all. But I believe you gentlemen in the jury will agree with me that I should I have... Object, I object, Your Honor, to the witness talking directly to the jury. Objection sustained. The witness will confine his testimony to the questions asked him, please. That's all. The defense may have the witness. No questions, thank you. Witness dismissed. Call the next witness, please. Uh, we'd like to have Mr. Lum Edwards, Your Honor. Oh, Mr. Edwards, please. Mr. Edwards? Mr. Edwards? Well, he ain't here yet. Uh, he stopped by the insurance company a while ago, but he said he'd be right on over here directly. Well, we'd like to have Mr. Peabody on the witness stand then, Your Honor. Oh, Mr. Peabody, please. I hear him. I'm coming. Raise your right hand. Be sworn. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Uh, sure. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah I, I do. Mr. Peabody. I have a letter here which you wrote to defendant Mr. Skimp the day following the accident. Will you please look at it and uh, tell the court if this is your signature? Uh, 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 tell him if it's my what? Your signature. Did you sign this? Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's my handwriting all right. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's Lom's right there, too. I, I know his writing when I see it. Yes, well, thank you. I'd like to read this letter and submit it as evidence in this case. This is a note the plaintiff received from the defendants while he was confined to his bed after the accident. Dear Squire, it reads, We are awful sorry you got hurt when you fell down in our picture show last night. We feel bad about it because we know it's our fault for not having more light in there so you could see where you was going. Anything we can do for you, be sure and let us know. For we feel responsible for the whole business. Yours truly, Lom Edwards and Abner Peabody. You admit writing this note to you, Mr. Peabody? Why, uh, well, yes, uh, we sent it over. I just thought I'd try to cheer Squire up, you know. You admit, then, that you don't have the proper lighting facilities in your theater. Well, I... Uh, don't know about that, but I know I, I ain't never fell down. I know that. That's all. Defense may have the witness. No questions. That's all, Mr. Peabody. Call the next witness. I think that's sufficient testimony, Your Honor. The defense can call their witnesses now, if they have any. Your Honor, I'd like to call Milford Spears to the stand, please. Oh, Milford Spears. Hey, get up there, Grandpa. Milford Spears? Milford Spears? Be careful what you say up there, too. I know what I'm doing. Get up. Raise your right hand, please. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Your name is uh, Milford Spears, is it not? Yeah, yeah, they call me Grandpa, but that ain't my real name. Uh, Mr. Spears, how long have you known the plaintiff here, Mr. Stemp? Why, ever since he moved to Pine Ridge, I reckon about four years ago. Come here from Missouri, you know. Well, do you think that he is a man that would pretend to have been injured just to collect damages? I know that blame well. I would. object, Your Honor. The witness is merely expressing his personal opinion. Objection sustained. The jury will please disregard the witness's answer to the last question. That's all. Your witness. Why, well, Mr. Spears, a short time ago, you were in Mr. Skint's employee, were you not? Yeah, yeah, I worked for him. That's what you mean. And uh, you and Mr. Skimp had a kind of a falling out when he discharged you, didn't you? Well, yeah. Yeah, I reckon we did. You have no use whatsoever then now for Mr. Skimp? Well, I don't know if I've got any love. And you are now in the employee of Mr. Edwards and Mr. Peabody. Yeah, yeah, I'm working for Lom and Abner now. That's so. Hold the next witness, please. I'd like to have uh, Cedric Weehunt call to the stand, please. Oh, Mr. Weehunt. Mr. Weehunt? Mr. Weehunt? Hey, go on up there, Cedric. Yes, I'm going. I believe he's making a mistake calling Cedric up there. Raise your right hand, please. 
You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, Mom. Your name is uh, Cedric Weehan. <laughs> yes, Mom, that's what it is. <laughs> Mr. Weehan, uh, you were employed by Mr. Skimp for a while, were you not? <laughs> yes, Mom, but when Mr. Lum and Mr. Abner closed up his show for him, well, I quit him. Well, uh, did you ever hear Mr. Skimp make any threats against Mr. Edwards or Mr. Peabody? I object, Your Honor. Yes, Mom. He, he said he'd get even with him if it was the last thing he ever I done. I object to that question, Your Honor, and ask it if he's stricken from the record. Objection overruled. Proceed. Do you think that the accident Mr. Skimp is supposed to have had was his way of making good his threat to get I even? I object, to... Your Honor. I object to that question. Objection sustained. That's all. Here with us. Mr. Spears. Uh, no, Mr. Weehan, I believe it is. Yes, Mom. Yes. Uh, you testified a while ago that uh, you quit the employee of Mr. Skimp. Yes. While in reality, Mr. Skimp fired you, didn't he? No, Mom. He just shut up his show and I had to quit. Yes. Uh, you are now in the employee of Mr. Edwards and Mr. Peabody, are you not? Yes, Mom. I'm working for him. That's all. Uh, Judge, you ought to come along now. Well, uh, I'd like to have Mr. Edwards placed on the witness stand, please, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Edwards, will you come right on up to the yeah, front, please? Look at old Army. Looks like he's run all the way over here. <laughs> yeah. Just where I want to get, Your Honor. I've got some new evidence here. Well. Well, Mr. Edwards, in, please. Raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Now, Your Honor, the reasons I'm late for the trial... I'm all out of breath. I, I come by the insurance company to buy some liabilities insurance for our theater, and while I was there, the insurance man told me that he sold Squire Skimp a life insurance policy just two days after that accident was supposed to happen. He was examined by a doctor, and they just got notice back this morning that he passed the physical examination and was accepted. Object, Your Honor. Object, Your, Your Honor. Honor. I move that the case be dismissed. The plaintiff could have suffered no ill effects from the alleged accident. He would not have been... Well, what do you know about that? It looks like Squire Skimp also makes mistakes. All mothers should listen to this interesting unsolicited letter from Mrs. Anita B. Dunlap of Marion, Ohio. She says, My baby son had ten operations before he was seven weeks old. He was in an incubator and was fed with a medicine dropper. It was a trial to find something to start him on and save his life. When the baby was three weeks old and still in the hospital, the nurse began feeding him Horlick's malted milk. From that time on, baby began to improve, and naturally, we continued to feed him Horlick's. At seven weeks, he was taken out of the incubator. At one year, he had cut all his teeth without a bit of trouble, and is now 16 years old and nearly six feet tall. Never another illness in his life, thanks to Horlick's. Well, thank you, Mrs. Dunlap. From the picture you sent, that delicate baby certainly grew into a fine lad. We appreciate your letter. Other mothers may hear your story and decide to try Horlicks for their children. Those mothers can get Horlicks at any druggist. This is Carlton Brickert, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who now bid you all good night and good health.